uh, 6.17 a.m. Uh, the weather is unbelievably clear. This is a rare day at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Sometimes the uh, marine layer fog is so thick you can't even see the rocket. Uh, so we have some beautiful shots. Uh, might even be able to see the rocket uh, from Los Angeles today. Uh, we were tracking upper level winds. Right now, the upper level winds are about 95% of our launch levels. Uh, so we're still good to go, uh, though we are monitoring them as we get down to launch. Uh, but ground level winds and cloud rules are all looking great. So it looks like we're on track for a 6.17 a.m. launch in just about T minus six minutes. talk a little bit about today's payload. Uh, it is called PATH, which is the Spanish word for peace, and it is a radar satellite of Spain's National Earth Observation Satellite Program. The PATH mission is a dual-use mission funded by the Spanish Ministry of Defense and managed by ISDESAT, a private Spanish communications company. PATH carries an X-band radar imaging payload to collect views of the Earth for government and commercial customers, along with ship tracking and weather sensors. X-band radar allows the satellite to image the Earth day and night, regardless of weather conditions on the surface. The satellite will be launched into a sun-synchronous polar orbit, meaning that its orbit stays in the same plane with respect to the sun as the Earth rotates and revolves around its own orbit. Uh, this allows the PATH satellite to image any given point on the planet under the exact same lighting conditions, which is extremely useful for imaging applications. Uh, once operational, PATH will be capable of generating about 100 images a day, covering an area of more than 300,000 kilometers square. And as we mentioned earlier, there are two SpaceX test satellites flying as secondary payloads on this mission. Uh, these are meant to gather data in advance of deploying and operating a satellite constellation that will provide internet service. However, even if these satellites work as planned, we still have considerable technical work ahead of us to design and deploy a low Earth orbit satellite constellation. The system, if successful, would provide people in low to moderate population densities around the world with affordable, high-speed internet access, including many that have never had internet access before. Uh, you may catch a glimpse of these demo sats when we deploy the PATH satellite, but our coverage and focus today will be on our primary payload, which is the PATH satellite. We are just after T minus three minutes away from liftoff, so let's check in one last time with the status of this rocket. Fuel is fully loaded on both stages and liquid oxygen is being topped off as we speak. Right now the rocket is pressurizing itself with helium gas, sort of like a soda can derives some of its strength from the pressure inside. Uh, the Falcon 9 is pressurized with gaseous helium and we press that up just before releasing it from the strong back. Uh, you just saw those cradle arms from the Strongback release, and right now the transport erector Strongback is reclined to its launch position at 77 and a half degrees. Uh, right now the range is still giving us a green light for launch. Uh, the weather is again looking fantastic. Those upper level winds are still playing nice at 95% launch tolerances. Uh, remember, this is an instantaneous launch window, so if for any reason we Stage decide not to go today, down. our backup window will be tomorrow at 6.17 a.m. Pacific. Rock, uh, right now, the rocket's green. getting ready to launch, Rock, so let's listen into green. those countdown nets as we approach just under T minus two minutes.
Falcon 9 is on internal power. Vehicles and self-line. Gas loads are closed down. AFTS is one's ready. Falcon 9 is in startup. Those of you just joining us, you are watching the Falcon 9 as it ascends through the atmosphere, carrying the POTH satellite to a polar sun-synchronous orbit. Right now, the rocket is approaching what we call Max-Q. This is the point at which the aerodynamic forces in the rocket are at the greatest. The Falcon 9 Eagle actually Supersonic. throttles itself down as it passes through Max-Q and then throttles back up once we're through it. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. We just uh, passed through our maximum aerodynamic pressure, Max Q. That Falcon 9 the rocket is now throttling go. back up to full speed as it ascends through the atmosphere. As that first stage ascends higher and higher through the atmosphere, the ambient air pressure starts going uh, further and further down, so you can see those uh, exhaust gases getting bigger and bigger on your camera screen right now. Uh, in a few, in about 20 seconds, we're going to be passing through what we call MECO, which is main engine cutoff. Uh, that's when that first stage is going to complete its burn. Shortly after that, we'll have stage separation, and then second engine start, uh, SES-1. Let's watch that happen now. You just we saw it on your position. screen, that was a good Miko main engine cutoff, a good separation of that first stage, and then uh, what appears to be a successful second engine start one. Stand by for fairing deploy. And you just saw it on your screen. That was a successful fairing deploy. You can see the fairing uh, falling down below the second stage on your screen right now. 
SpaceX will be attempting to recover this fairing uh, today. On your screen right now, you can see the Merlin Vacuum D engine nozzle. This is a radiatively cooled uh, engine nozzle, meaning that it vents the heat from those hot exhaust gases by uh, like radiating that energy. You can see it glowing red hot, uh, burning that energy away. For those of you down in Southern California, you might get a good glimpse of those exhaust gases as the uh, second stage accelerates. Uh, looked like a nice clear morning today in Los Angeles. As the second stage ascends uh, higher and higher into orbit, let's talk a little bit about exactly what orbit we're going to today. Uh, this is a low Earth orbit polar sun synchronous orbit. Uh, low Earth orbit refers to the height of the orbit above the Earth, so uh, things such as the International Space Station are also in low Earth orbit, uh, but they orbit more along the equator, which is what's called a low inclination orbit. A polar orbit uh, circles vertically about the Earth with respect to its poles, so that it passes over the North and the South Poles. This is the orbit we're going to today. Uh, certain types of polar orbits, like this one, a sun-synchronous orbit, keeps the orbit's plane directly in line with the Sun, uh, this allows any satellite that's in a sun-synchronous orbit to see the, all points of the Earth from exactly the same lighting conditions uh, as illuminated by the sun. This is extremely useful for imaging applications, uh, which would be the POTH spacecraft's primary intended purpose. Low Earth orbits only require a single burn, so we won't be having a coast phase or a second engine start too like we would normally have for geosynchronous Earth orbit launches. For those of you just joining us, we did have a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket at exactly 6.17 a.m. Pacific time from Space Launch Complex 4 in Vandenberg Air Force Base. Uh, shortly after that, the first stage completed its job and separated from that second stage. We're currently watching the second stage as it continues its first burn, its only burn today, uh, as, and accelerating that POTH spacecraft to a low Earth orbit. The next major event is going to be at about T plus 8 minutes and 58 seconds. That's when that second engine cutoff is going to happen, uh, also known as SECO. Right now you can see the curvature of the second Earth stage uh, just behind that Merlin Vacuum D engine nozzle. All telemetry is still looking nominal from that second stage, getting good signal. As we burn fuel in that second stage, uh, the second stage actually gets lighter and lighter, but the engine thrust remains the same. So uh, in order to keep a constant acceleration on the second stage and its payload, we actually throttle that Merlin vacuum engine down towards the end. We're getting close towards the end of the burn right now, so that throttle down is beginning. Coming up next in about 40 seconds is going to be SECO, second engine cutoff. 
That second stage Merlin vacuum engine is going to shut off having completed its primary burn. Uh, and then a minute after that, or two minutes after that, we're going to have payload separation. So stand by for SECO in about 20 or 30 seconds from now. Stage two is in terminal guidance. And the okay, OSDS is safe. Yeah, go one. And you just saw it on your screen. That was a second engine cutoff right there. Uh, the second stage has now completed its burn, and that's Merlin vacuum engine is off. Good orbit insertion. We just got confirmation of a good orbit. Uh, that means that we have reached the intended low Earth orbit point.